Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to J. Crew. This is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with. Boys and girls, I pray that you have had a blessed, good weekend and that you are ready to go into God's word just to see some things that he has prepared for you so that you can live that blessed life that he desires for you to live. Boys and girls, do you know that you are part of a household, a household of God, if you have professed your faith in Jesus Christ? And because you are part of God's household, God has expectations for each of us. And his expectations, one of his expectations, boys and girls, is to know the rules of his household. And how do we know the rules of his household? Boys and girls, we need to study his word. Study to show ourselves approved unto God. This is our tool. This is our guide to pleasing God in his household. And I pray, boys and girls, that that is a priority in your life, that you want to please God. And if you truly want to please God, know what pleases God. And how do we know what pleases God? It's by opening up his word. Amen. Amen. And I pray that over this holiday season, you will go and do that, that you will take a few minutes each day to see what God has for you. Amen. Amen. Let us go to our heavenly father in prayer, and then we'll go from there. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for this time that you have blessed us to come together to study another portion of your word. Bless these children, dear Heavenly Father. Bless their hearts, their minds, their spirit. Open up their hearts, dear Lord. I pray that they will open up their hearts to receive your word as seed planted into fertile soil that produces roots and bear much fruit. Father, I pray that they will take the seed of this word that they received today and don't let it be choked by the cares and the worries of this world, even during this holiday season, worrying about what they're going to get for Christmas. I pray that they will set that aside so that they can hear from you and their souls will be blessed. We love you. We adore you. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we're getting ready to go into the word for today. The title of today's message is, Don't Write Me Off Just Yet. Don't write me off just yet. You may have heard that phrase before. You may not have heard that phrase before, but I'm going to explain that phrase to you. We're going to be in John chapter 21, and we're going to watch a video that fulfills um, <clears throat> the story of Peter in John chapter 21. But before we go there, let's um, get an understanding as to what it means to be written off. What it means, boys and girls, when someone has written us off, this can be hurtful. What people are saying when they say when they write you off, boys and girls, they're saying that you are useless. They're saying that you are pointless, that you are hopeless, that you are worthless, that you've been abandoned. In other words, boys and girls, you are considered a loss. In other words, you've been written off to be good for nothing, but to be trampled upon and thrown out. Boys and girls, that is hurtful. And sometimes people do it to us. And sometimes, boys and girls, we do it to ourselves. In other words, boys and girls, sometimes we get in trouble. Today, we might be disrespectful. And we say, man, am I ever going to change? Or we may be a thief taking things that don't belong to us. And that could be a horrible feeling when you're taking something, especially from your parents. Or you find yourself at the principal's office all the time. Man, am I ever going to stay out of trouble? Or are you getting into the habit and getting pleasure in actually destroying things that don't belong to you, even within your community? Or you might just have a foul mouth. Every second word that come out of your mouth is a cuss word. And you take pleasure in hurting other individuals' feelings. Or you just might be a bit bad bully. So boys and girls, those are some of the things that you may be going through right now. Some of the activities that you may be participating in right now. And because you are participating in such activities, there are people who have written you off as going to be someone who find themselves either in jail or dead or just a failure in this life. And sometimes boys and girls, because we get into the habit of doing some of these things, we find ourselves writing ourselves off and say, I will never be better. I will never get better. I will never start doing right. I will never stay out of trouble. We can write ourselves off, boys and girls, seeing ourselves as being what? Useless, pointless, hopeless, worthless, just a total loss. And boys and girls, that is not the case. None of us are total loss. God did not create any mess. 
Yes, we may make some mess, but God did not create us to be a mess. Amen. Amen. And so what happened, boys and girls, we're going to share the story today. The story is about Peter. Peter gives us hope, boys and girls. <clears throat> we all have done some things or are doing some things that we know we should not be doing. But Jesus is patient and he is forgiving. And he also looks beyond our faults, boys and girls, and sees the best in us. He did it for Peter and he will do it for us. So we're going to share the story in this video about Peter who gives us hope, even the Though we may be continually getting in trouble over and over again at home, at school, in the community, wherever we go, boys and girls, there's still hope. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pause for a moment, and we're going to watch this video, and then we'll come back and finish the rest of the lesson. Amen? Amen. The Miracle of Mercy, Peter. This is Peter. Hey Whoop. Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus and he heard all of his teachings. When the time came for Jesus to die and take away the sins of all the world, Jesus had one final meal with his friends. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What is that? But Peter said, why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, die for me, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh -oh. But Peter said, even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I Later on that night, Jesus was arrested by men sent by the religious teachers and priests. Peter tried to fight for Jesus. Oh, and he cut off the ear of one of the guards. Ow. But Jesus healed the guard uh -huh. and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the high priest. Peter and another disciple followed them. Peter came to warm himself by their fire. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> A servant girl noticed him in the firelight. Huh? Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. Oh, ma? But Peter denied it for the first time. He said, I don't even know him. <sighs> After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. Oh. Peter for a second time said, no, I'm not. Uh, okay. <sighs> About an hour later, a man who knew the man whose ear Peter cut off said, Didn't I see you in the olive grove with Jesus? This must be one of them. He comes from the same place as all of them. Yeah, you're right. But Peter said, No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And then Peter heard the crow of the rooster. <laughs> Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Jesus' words flashed through his mind, and Peter left the courtyard weeping. Then Jesus died and was placed in a tomb. The disciples heard that he had come back from the dead. Peter even saw the empty tomb and believed that Jesus was alive again. And Jesus appeared to the disciples to show him that he was alive. 
Some of Jesus' followers were together when Peter said, I am going fishing. Okay. So they all went out to the sea, but caught nothing all night. At dawn, they saw a man standing on the beach. Oh, hey, over here. The man called out to them and said, have you caught any fish? Nope. The man said, throw out your net on the right side and you'll get some. Uh, okay. So they did, and they couldn't bring in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then one of the men on the boat said to Peter, it's Jesus. When Peter heard that it was Jesus, he swam to the shore while the others pulled in the load to the boat. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Mm-hmm, my mission fish. Got it. Jesus said, come have some breakfast. While they were eating, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, you know I love you. So Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked again, do you love me? Peter said again, yes, you know I love you. And Jesus said, then take care of my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked a question a third time. So he said, you know everything. You know that I love you. So Jesus said one last time, then feed my sheep. And so Peter went on to feed Jesus' sheep by helping establish the church and by writing books that we can now read in the Bible. And though he denied Jesus, he was forgiven. And many came to know the love and forgiveness of Jesus through Peter. Okay, so boys and girls, we know that from the story, Peter, he messed up. He messed up big time. First thing he did is he lied to the people, saying he didn't even know Jesus. And then he denied him, not just one time, not just two times, but three times. And he sort of kind of did it in Jesus' face, because after the rooster crow, guess who was looking at Peter? And Peter was looking at him. It was Jesus. And so guess what Peter did? Peter cried after he heard the rooster crow. He ran away. And boys and girls, I almost feel certain that he just written it off, written himself off saying, I will never be a disciple for Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, that could happen to any of us. We can get so caught up in some things that we know that are wrong, but we still get caught up into them. And once we realize that they are wrong, we have a choice to make. We could either get it right or we can just write ourselves off. People can write us off too. Just imagine the disciples when they found out that G Peter had denied Jesus three times. They probably were whispering behind their ear, man, what's going on with Peter? Peter, I mean, he's the one who's supposed, supposed to just die with Jesus, but he done denied him to die Jesus three times. And that can happen to each other. So the disciples could, poss could have possibly been individuals who have written Peter off as well. But here's the thing, boys and girls, even if people write us off, guess who will never write us off? His name is Jesus. Because here's what happened with Jesus, as the story said. Jesus, he found Peter, right? What were Peter and all of the other disciples doing? They were fishing. And then Jesus fed Peter. He said, hey, y'all, bring y'all fishing so we can have a fish fry. And then Jesus forgave Peter. In other words, instead of throwing back into Peter's face the fact that he had denied Jesus three times, Jesus treated Peter as if it never happened. And then Jesus affirmed his, reaffirmed his relationship with Peter, that he loved Peter. And how did he show that? He trusted Peter to take care of his lambs and his sheep. Jesus gave it all over to Peter. And so boys and girls, just like Jesus did not write off Peter, Jesus would not write us off. Even when we make mistakes in our lives and we're going to make some mistakes and people are going to talk about us, some are going to write us off. And sometimes we'll feel like we've done it so many times that we write ourselves off. But there's someone who loves us dearly and sees the greatness in each of us. And he will never, ever write us off. And his name is Jesus. 
So though the world and even ourselves, boys and girls, we may write ourselves off, Jesus won't. While other people see the worst in us, Jesus sees the best in us. So when Peter actually got, was um, was, um, was sort of kind of like um, redeemed, guess what Peter did? Peter repented, right? He ran back to Jesus. He received a new assignment and he returned to the position of leadership. All because Jesus did not give up on Peter. Even if Peter had given up on himself and even if the disciples had given up on him, Jesus did not give up on Peter. And because of Peter's assignment, he went forth leading in the beginning of the new church of the New Testament church. And he was a vocal, vocal disciple for Jesus Christ. So boys and girls, when you reflect back and you see that you find yourself in the principal's office all the time, or you may be even stealing, have a foul mouth, disrespectful to your parents, destroying property within the community, even a bullying. If you are any of those things, boys and girls, don't let anyone write you off just yet. You're going to get better. You're going to get better. You may be going through some growing pain right now and the troubles that you are going through, but there's something that you can do right now. You can make a decision to do as Peter. Repent. Turn from those things that you are doing and turn to Jesus. And guess what? Jesus, just as he used Peter, he would use each one of us. Forgive us, cleanse us, and what? Use us as instruments of righteousness. And so instead of us always being in the principal's office, we will always be on the principal's list. Instead of us actually, actually taking stuff that don't belong to us, we will be a servant to give to those who are less fortunate than us. And instead of us having a foul mouth and hurting others' feelings, we will say words that will lift up individuals and make them feel good. Instead of being disrespectful to our parents, we will be respectful and obedient to our parents that things will go well with us and we will have a long life on this earth. Instead of us actually destroying things within the community, we will beautify the community by showing by showing our neighbors how um love by taking taking care of them that garden um their garden or uh, raking their leaves doing things within the community that beautifies the community and instead of us being a bully we become friends boys and girls it's possible but you have to make a decision and i pray to god that you will make that decision that you don't want to keep going down this path don't write yourself off and don't let anyone else write, your, write you off, boys and girls. You have an opportunity to turn from those things and do better. You can do it. Amen? Amen. Because the reason, boys and girls, I believe that you can do it because all of us are precious in the sight of God. He loves the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Every person is worth giving a chance. You are worth giving another chance. And Jesus wants to give you that chance. All you have to do is turn. Amen. Amen. And every person is worth being saved. So boys and girls, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. Don't let anyone write you off just yet. And don't you dare write yourself off yet because you are precious in the sight of God. And you may be going through some growing pains right now, but you can get better. All you have to do is make up in your mind that you're going to stop doing the wrong, start doing the right, and leave the consequences to God. And you will see transformation in your life, not only in your life, but people around you. And you will see yourself being prosperous and successful in every aspect of your life because you are allowing Jesus to use you just like Peter allowed Jesus to use him. Even after Peter did all of those things he did, Jesus still used Peter. And after all of the bad things that you may have done, guess what? Jesus desires to still use you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, boys and girls. And I pray that something has been said 
that has lifted your spirit and given you hope that even though you may be going through some stuff right now, it's going to get better. And the first step that you can make is by stop the things that you are doing that are wrong and start doing right. It's just a thing that you make up in your mind to do. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And may God keep you.